In this video, I will talk about the problem of multicollinearity. In multiple regression, we face this issue. This issue arises when two or more variables are correlated among themselves. So, what does high correlation mean? High correlation means that there is redundancy in the data. If two variables are very highly correlated, then they are representing the same information. There is a very slight difference between them. So, if you include both the variables in the model, which are very highly correlated, say for example, correlation of 0 0.9, then they are almost the same variable. You are including the same variable twice. That will cause problem in the model. So, what problem will it cause? Uh, this will cause instability in the model, thereby inflating the standard error of the estimates. So, the uh, parameter estimates or the coefficients that you estimate from the um, regression equations cannot be reliable. So, this is a serious problem uh, in regression analysis and uh, we need to uh, first uh, find it out whether that problem exists or not and then we should, uh, you know, we should find out the ways in which we can remove this problem. For this exercise, I will uh, take data set from SAS Health. I have taken data uh, from SAS Health. SAS Health is a permanent library in SAS. The name of the data is CARS. You can get it from there. I have taken it from there and put it in my work library. I have taken four variables from there. Uh, mileage, weight, horsepower and length. So, mileage is my uh, dependent variable. Weight, horsepower and length are my independent variables. So, uh, when I run this uh, code, I will get the output from the model. Okay. With this simple, uh, this is this is a multiple regression model. So I need to see whether there is a presence of multicollinearity in this model or not. So first I'll run it without checking anything. Okay, I'll run it first. So this is my model model output. How do I know if the, my model has multicollinearity or? For that, we use uh, a, a statistical, uh, in fact, it's a non-statistical uh, <coughs> quantity known as variance inflation uh, factor. In fact, I'll write it down for you. Variance inflation. Or in short, we call it as VIF. So, what is a VIF? Let me take you to the Wikipedia page. You have a good explanation there. So, what is a VIF? Well, we, we uh, calculate VIF like this. So, we have like so many independent variables x1, x2, x3, up to xk. So, first we regress. We will take the first variable x1 and we regress it with all other variables, all other independent variables. Okay. We leave out the dependent variable, we, we uh, regress it with all other independent variables. And then we will collect the r square value from that equation. And then we calculate VIF using this 1 by 1 minus r square. So for x1, this will be r1 square. Then we will change it to x2. Okay. So for the variable x2, we put x2 here and then put all the in, all other independent variable in the uh, right hand side. So and then collect the r square and then put it in this formula and collect VIF for the second variable and so on. So the rule of thumb is that the rule of thumb is that the VIF VIF should be less than 10. 
anything greater than 10 greater than equal to 10 uh, is is uh, very very dangerous it it confirms that uh, it confirms that there is presence of multipollinarity in the data so uh, there is another uh, another quantity that can also be used is the tolerance limit okay some researcher use this tolerance limit so the tolerance limit has to be less than 0.1 okay it has to be less than 0 0.1 essentially that's like the reciprocal of bif nothing no difference as such so to get vif and uh, tolerance limit we use in the option vif and then tol so in the model statement itself we just put these options and then let's run this now in the parameter estimate uh, box you can see the tolerance limit and the variance inflation factor you will not get it for intercept you will get it only for the uh, variance as you can see the uh, vif is less than 10 for all three variables and so is the tolerance limit it, it's uh, greater than 0.1 so there is no presence of multicollinearity in our data set but if it were like vif is greater than 10 of close to 10 then we can be very sure that there is presence of multicollinearity and then we need to find it out like how why it is happening so in case we have the presence of multicollinearity what should we be doing how do we remove this problem from the uh, analysis well this this happened because there is high correlation in the data set so what you do is that you remove uh, you know, if two variables are very correlated, you remove uh, one variable from it. So, if you remove that, so so first you do what in the uh, exploratory data analysis, you take the correlation matrix of all independent variables, check in which uh, cases we have high correlation. When we say high correlation, uh, we, we obviously ask ourselves what should be the cutoff point. Well, there is no rule of thumb. 0 0.6, 0 0.7, you can take anything. As long as your VIF uh, is coming down to less than 10, you are okay with that. Else, you know, keep on decreasing your cutoff value. So, uh, how do you know that if two variables are uh, correlated, which one to be used and which one to be dropped? Well, it, it all depends on which variable is more important for your analysis. Say, for example, weight and length are very highly correlated. Uh, and that's the reason why there is uh, uh, multicollinearity. I want to drop one of the variables from weight and length. How do I know which one to be uh, dropped? So uh, it is entirely up to us, entirely up to the analyst to think that which variable is more important for him. If he is not very sure about it, he can uh, use one variable at one time and then see how what is the as square value. Okay, uh, if if weight is contributing more to the R square value, then I'll keep weight. If length is contributing more to the R square value, I'll keep length. So uh, so how do I do that? I remove this portion and I regress only with the weight. So uh, mileage with weight, and I'll check the R square value, and then I'll note it down. Then I'll remove weight. I'll put only length and check the R square value. Okay, so now I, now I compare the two R square. If the R square of weight is higher than R square of length, then I take R. Let's do it actually, that, that will be uh, better. So let's do a linear regression using mileage with weight. So the R square here is 54%. Let's use length in place of weight. Well, it's 25%. So it's obvious that 
we need to drop length not uh, not weight because the r square of the model when you use only weight is higher than when you use only length okay so that's how you drop two correlated values in one of the correlated variable uh, from the other okay so it the hence it's very important to check uh, correlation at the very beginning of the analysis so that you know uh, you won't come to this uh, you know you know this problem would have been removed in the very beginning of the analysis itself okay